Um, one of the other things that I was going to ask you about while we have you on the phone, I, we've we've had conversations about this before where obviously none of us can be experts on everything. We simply don't have the time, and so we must rely on uh, authorities in areas that we're unfamiliar with. Sometimes we do this to our detriment. I mean, if you're not if you're not as knowledgeable about medicine as somebody and you rely on the wrong person, <laughs> you could yeah. end up dead. Uh, uh -huh. But uh, since I'm not an expert on biology or evolutionary biology, I wonder if you'd chime in on Artie. Oh, hmm. sure. Uh, isn't it cool? <laughs> <laughs> yes, saw the pictures. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, what it is, it's, it's, it's part of normal science, that we, we keep on digging up this new data and keep digging further and further back. So Artipithecus rhamnitus is is this beautiful specimen from four point well it's multiple specimens actually it's been pieced together from four point four million years ago and basically what it does is it pushes back our understanding of the human lang like human lineage another million years and we can see what preceded the australopithecines like lucy uh. and she's very interesting because well she's she's much more human-like than people expected mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, people were thinking, well, the predecessor was probably something a little closer to a chimpanzee, you know, a little less bipedal. Uh, what we find in, in, in Artipithecus is that she's got a lot of features that are very human-like, you know, the, the structure of the body and so forth. But at the same time, she's got some quirks, like her, like her feet, for instance. You know, that she's got that opposable big toe. Right, it's right. Rather striking. Um, she she wasn't quite as uh, you know quite as good at bipedal locomotion as we are, and they could speculate. These are reasonable speculations, of course. These are inferences from the actual data, so it's it's not like just guesswork. Uh, you know, they could speculate about her lifestyle that she was probably uh, living in a wooded environment and was clambering around on trees and also walking in the ground. So kind of a mixed behavior there. Uh, but but that was what the what was interesting. So is we get this little snapshot of what the hominin lineage was like over four million years ago. Cool. But of course, the creationists are having a field day. Oh well, no, they're <laughs> well, not. We created they're, they're, two more. They're gaps. frantically Ooh. making excuses. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They, she's created a gap. Two more gaps. Uh, yeah, they, they oh, are the, making... the funniest thing is, is this character David Menton out of the Answers in Genesis. I just I just yeah. wrote something about him yesterday, oh, yeah. where he's horrified. You know, well, he's 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 disgusted and appalled and all these other things because she's just an ape. Oh which, boy. Which you've got to say, well, of course <laughs> yep. we're just apes too. What did you expect? <laughs> yeah. I, I think they uh, a crocodile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, my my opponent said, "What did you expect? A giraffe? I mean, cause, yeah, yeah. If we found a giraffe in the human lineage, that would be really surprising. <laughs> uh, it, it wouldn't be evidence for evolution, of course. But it seems like that's what they want. They want it both ways. That they want something that's that's not what we expect. That's not ape-like. But that wouldn't fit. <laughs> right. It's another example of them." Uh, abusing science both mm -hmm. both the intellectual integrity of science the the open system um of acknowledging what we do and don't understand yet and also um it, 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 the thing that's so frustrating to me is that they they twist what would be an, an a reasonable expectation uh you know like you mentioned this is uh this is an example that surprised us in some ways yeah and so they'll use those surprises as evidence or, or, or assert it as evidence against what it's actually supporting well they also assert it as like you know see they were wrong yeah you know <laughs> oh right yeah, yeah. They, they were wrong in what they thought and now and now here look here's now they're changing it again like you just can't trust them it's so <sighs> frustrating yes yeah that that this is what we should be expecting from our science is that every time we push it back, we will find something very surprising, that it's something yeah. unexpected. Because otherwise, why do science? <laughs> yes, we already <laughs> know we the want. answer. Yeah, the other thing that really bugged me about it is, is in these creationists are all saying, "Well, she's just an ape. She's she's merely another fossil." And and this is such an anti-intellectual position to take. I mean, even if I grant them 
you know, if I imagine myself, you know, somebody takes a ball peen hammer to my head, so I've got severe brain damage, and I imagine, okay, the world was created, God made it all, all this kind of stuff. Uh, still, finding a new species, mm-hmm. you know, a radically new species like this, ought to be grounds for excitement. Even if you're religious, you should be saying, well, hey, wow, isn't this a wonderful example of God's creative powers? But instead what you find is that they're all belittling it, which is yeah. just what, wrong. <laughs> what I find bizarre is that to prove evolution to, the, to a creationist, you have to show them something that would disprove evolution. Uh-huh. You know, you have to show them the crocodile, which would disprove yeah. evolution. <laughs> it's like <laughs> the only way you can prove it to us is to disprove it. You know, <laughs> it makes no sense. Well, exactly. This is this is a common problem when dealing with creationists. Is they're is they're sitting there and they're pontificating on how evolution is all wrong. But you sit down, and you talk to them, you discover they don't understand mm-hmm. evolution at mm-hmm. all. They've just got this mishmash of misconceptions in their head, and they sit there railing against this nonsense that that isn't yeah. in the biology books. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit into our understanding of evolutionary theory, and they think by doing so that they've made a comment against biology. And, and, and those those wrong ideas have to have been deliberately put in their heads because evolution, the 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 core concept of evolution is not that difficult to understand. Right. You right, have to be yes. deliberately misled. Well, they acknowledge microevolution, though. Oh know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, but that's that's only a rhetorical ploy. So they can say, "Well, I'm open-minded and scientific. I, I can accept this teeny tiny little piece of it," and then they go on and dismiss the, all the rest. But macroevolution has been demonstrated just as strongly as microevolution. Uh, if if anything, macroevolution was the first piece of evidence for evolutionary biology. Darwin had no idea about this micro macro distinction, right. and all the phenomena he described were macro macroevolutionary phenomena. Mm-hmm. 